Welcome to what is maybe my favorite video of the year where I'm sharing the best books I read this year. Let's rock and roll. Hey everybody, what's up? So I love reading and I love sharing what I learned because I think books are so influential and impactful about the way I think and just life in general. I think it really adds kind of joy to my life and I love sharing the books that I read this year. So this year, I actually read, I summed it up uh, just to make this video. It turns out I read 23 books this year, and I wanna share the best of them. So just to give a little context before we dive in, I know a lot of people are saying like, ah, I don't have time to read and everything, and I fully understand that. So let me explain to you how I read 23 books per year. Actually, I think it's less than I read in 2018, but whatever, it's not, I'm not just trying to read as much as possible. I'm trying to read good things and enjoy it. So I read two, there's two types of me reading. First one is actually listening to audiobooks, and I ride my bicycle every day to the office. It's probably like a 30 minute ride in and out. So there is about one hour of listening to audiobooks per day, and I take notes on you know my iPhone um, just to better remember. So I kind of have bullet points from my my every book that I read. Um, so this is how I read mostly nonfiction books, books about business, psychology, that type of stuff. During my lunch break, when I eat lunch, I usually eat alone because, you know, I work here alone. And so I would go to a restaurant or something like that. And I would just open up Kindle on my iPhone. And then during my lunch, when I eat, I would usually read kind of a fiction book. And I just started doing that this year, started reading fiction after I didn't read fiction for a lot of years. And I really missed it. I really, really feel that going back into reading fiction books really made me happier. I feel it like it really, really increased the quality of my life and the joy that I have from life, just like reading fiction books. So if you're not reading fiction books, give it a try. Might really improve the happiness of your life. Let's get down into, I, I wanna make this also kind of an, an award style and I broke it down into three categories. The best books I read in these three categories. So psychology, business and fiction. It, it's not like I intended to specifically read in those categories. It's just that now that I look at everything I read, looks like everything kind of fits into this, um, these categories. And usually I wouldn't think of myself as somebody who reads psychology that much, but this year turned out that because of recommendations that I got, uh, mainly I think from Tim Ferriss' podcast, I listen to a lot of books about psychology and it's been really, really impactful on my life. So let's start with psychology. The best book I read this year that impacted my thinking about psychology is The Courage to be Disliked, which is, even though it was written by two um, Japanese guys, it's basically covering the um, psychology of Adler, which is somebody who used to live in the same time as Freud. He's not as popular, but he's kind of contradicting a lot of what Freud says. This is really, really a mind-bending book, and it kind of lets you see things completely different. Basically, I'll just give you the kind of the core of it. Basically, what Adler says is, first of all, we're not implement, we're we're not guided by trauma, as as Freud says. Um, basically, things happen to us, but we choose how to interpret them um, based on what our goals are. So, somebody might have like a poor upbringing, but that would motivate him to be very successful because he wants to be successful successful, somebody else might have a poor background and use that as an excuse of why he's not getting ahead in life. Um, and basically what he says is that we, we're all born babies without, you know, depending on other people. So we're always striving to be independent and to be better. And we're always feeling like we are inadequate. We're not good enough. But for most people, that feeling of I'm not good enough gives you a motivation to try and improve and, and become better. But some people have um, inferiority complex, which means that because they are too obsessed with the thought that they're not good enough, right now, it gives them the excuse of not doing. 
Another complex is the um, superiority complex, which is because I'm feeling that I'm not good enough, I will try to show everybody that I'm better than them. And those are two not such a good ways to deal with the feeling that we're just not good enough. And that's natural and that's human. This is really, really an interesting book that will change the way that you think about a lot of things and about your happiness. I recommend you listen to it. It's very, very, very interesting. Um, other books I read in the realm of psychology, Awareness, really, really good book. Loving What Is, also I think I found on Tim Ferriss' book, uh, blog, really, really good rebo reboot. Um, I also listened to Jerry Colonna on Tim Ferriss' podcast, but I actually I did not enjoy that book that much. How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, Dale Carnegie, okay book. White Fragility, this was recommended to me by Vlad, CEO of Webflow, and I think it's a very, very important read especially for white people or white men, it kind of opens up your mind about how the whole system is supports you because you are white and you just don't see it because you know everything is systematically white and white is the normal. So you don't see what the result of you being white is. I think it's very important. Specifically for me, I live in Israel. So we have not only systematic, I would say racism to black people, we also have systematic racism towards Arab people. Um, and, and so I think this is really, really an eye-opening um, read. I think this is really also an important read. All right, the top business books, I couldn't decide which one was more important. So I put two in the, the kind of the best ones that I read this year. So the first one is called Profit First. And this is really a game changer in, in how I've managed my finances. Basically, bottom line of what this book says, you need to decide how much profit you're taking and taking it out before everything else. Otherwise, your profits are just going to um, you know, disappear. And it's just kind of like run your finances the other way around, not spend and what left is the profit. Take profit first and then manage your business accordingly. This really changed how we run um, our business. And so this was really impactful on me. The second one is good strategy, bad strategy. And I think this is really important for two reasons. First, how... I think about strategy for my business, also giving me the tool to talk about strategy with my clients, which I think is very, very important. Core kind of like takeaway from this book, good strategy, bad strategy, is that strategy is really when you understand what is the problem that you need to face. So a lot of strategy is really just understanding what's going on and what is really the problem. Then you can create solutions to how you, and focus all your effort on the one true problem that is a, a really good strategy. So also a very good book. Other books I read about business, Remote, which wasn't that awesome in my opinion. The third book, uh, The Third Door, Delivering Happiness, The Zappo Story, I Will Teach You to Be Rich, um, which was very interesting. Um, Russell Brand Mentors, wasn't that good at the end. Top Dog, um, interesting read about why people, some people are more competitors than other. Company of One, Paul Jarvis, um, I didn't really enjoy that one. I think it was just a little bit confused. Um, Gary Kasparov, How Light Imitates Chess. I did not really like that one as well. And the last two ones, Coaching Habit and Trillion Dollar Coach. Also, unfortunately, not such an amazing books, but you know, I give them a try anyway. All right, fiction. As I said, I haven't read fiction for a while now and going back to fiction was so, so much um, fun for me. Actually, the thing that brought me in, back into fiction was this book, Recursion, um, that was recommended. I heard um, John, John Curtin from Jonathan Curtin from AJ and Smart recommend this book, and I was like, "All right, let me try this book." I got into reading it. I could not put it down. It was such a good book. Um, you just can't stop reading it because it is kind of like intense. It is like ongoing it's like and it makes you think about your life it makes you it's kind of like science fiction but really makes you think about your life um it's kind of like what would happen if things were different i don't want to you know make a spoiler or something like that but it really helps you think about you know the fact that your life right now are okay or intact um so many things had to go right in order to be that way and you actually felt gratitude after reading this this book um other fiction books that i read 
someone who will love you in all your damage glory. It's from the the person that um, writes the BoJack Horseman, if you know that Netflix um, show. So this was kind of like short stories. It was nice. Um, Dark Matter is the other book, even actually even maybe more famous book of Blake Crouch, the author of Recursion. So after I finished Recursion, I was like, I got to read one more thing from him, which is pretty similar in a different way, but also like suspense, high suspense, also makes you think about your life. So really, really good uh, fiction book. And now after I finished them, I've actually started the James Cowell Asian Saga, which is basically six books. Each one of them is like super long. Um, Each of them is in a different um, historical period somewhere in Asia. So the first one is Shogun, which I actually read when I was a kid. It's It's um, actually the story of the first Englishman that arrived to Japan in 1600 and his whole experience. And he actually kind of became a samurai and be, kind of uh, went to be the advisor of the, you know, the shogun, the, the main um, advisor, one of the main kind of like big guys in Japan back in the time. Really, really, really interesting. It's kind of like a soap opera of samurais, but it really gets you into the whole Japanese culture Bushido, Honor, Samurai. It's really, really, really good book. Um, And then I moved to the second one, which I'm about to finish right now, which is called Taipan. Um, This is based in the years that Hong Kong was started. Um, So all about the kind of the pirates and the opium trade. Really, it's actually those two books. And I I actually think the whole Asian saga is a great way to learn history, um, which is crazy. The history of our world is really crazy based on stories. So it's not like you're reading, um, you know, a history book it's like you're watching a great movie or something like that but you actually are your mind is blown by the fact that oh my god these think the world actually work that way this is just like crazy people like england was like sponsoring selling drugs to china so they could buy tea like the the world is is crazy anyway i highly highly recommend the asian saga from james Cavill. it's long but it's really really good. Anyway, those were my best reads from 2019. I would love to hear from you if you're reading and you have a great book recommendation for me. I would love to hear what you read this year, what has been impactful for you, and give me some recommendations for 2020. I'll see you on the next video.